Okay. Look, Jimbo Fisher being out of Texas A&M, you probably hear that and you go, oh, this is locked on Big 12. I don't know why you sound like that, but you do, I guess. Oh, this is locked on Big 12, and it is. But this, to me, has a trickle effect into the Big 12 for a couple of different reasons. And maybe the most obvious that you probably point to first is, okay, if there's an opening in the Big 12, is Jimbo Fisher in the market to coach? I go back to an Ed Orgeron quote, one of my favorites. Um, he's talking to the Little Rock Touchdown Club, and they asked him about when he was fired at LSU. He said that the AD called him, said, look, you have $17 million left in your contract. We'll give it all to you. And Ordron said, see you later. Which do- I'm gone. Which door you want me out of? Thank you, boss. And for for Jimbo Fisher making $70 million off of this, I mean, wow, I would love to get paid $70 million bucks to do nothing for the next however long I want to. In this scenario, he doesn't have to come back and coach. He can go be a studio analyst, go to the SEC network, whittle away in TV and be done. Or he can come coach one of the many Big 12 teams, say many, one of the trio, maybe four Big 12 teams that are considering coaching changes at the end of the season. Now, look, I am a Baylor grad myself. I, I've mentioned that many times. And you know my allegiance is with Baylor. So I'm what I'm bringing you is Jimbo's not going to go to a Baylor. If you're a Baylor fan, get that out of your head. Jimbo's not going to go be a coordinator somewhere in the Big 12 or anywhere else. I don't think he'd be the head coach at Houston. I don't know if he's interested in staying in the state of Texas. But he was born and raised, raised in West Virginia. That's saying something. And that's a storied football program, too. I mean, West Virginia is a great place to coach. West Virginia, is it's a place that everybody has won who's not named Neil Brown. Neil Brown, the worst head coach record-wise since the 1970s at West Virginia. Now, but that that's, that's all beside the point. I don't want to go there first. That's the low-hanging fruit of here's what happens. Jimbo Fisher fired. Can we dream about him coming to the Big 12? Can we dream this dream of him being in our conference? Instead, to me, this is more about Texas A&M Open. Because now if West Virginia comes open, because now if if Baylor comes open, if Houston comes open, because remember just a few weeks ago, the whole Dana Holgerson thing, it was unacceptable. He was coming to the press conferences like I, my hands are you know, hand up. No idea what's going on. Not sure how we can fix it. This is the growing pains of being in a new conference. Fans didn't like it. The admin didn't like it. I don't think Dana Holgerson is entirely safe. I don't think Dave Aranda is entirely safe. The buyout's huge in Waco. And if you have two Texas teams looking for a new head coach, a la Baylor and Houston, and what's even more is that A&M is looking for a head coach. Now your number one option is probably off the board. He's probably going to Texas A&M in, in coaching cycles. You hope for your team that nobody else is firing. You hope it's one of those years where there aren't a lot of marquee big jobs in the market. Not the case right now. Indiana likely open, and that's the least of these. Miami could be open at the end of year. Michigan State is open. Now Texas A&M is open. Arkansas could be open. And that list goes further and further when you think about the teams that might fight. Like if Dan Lanning leaves Michigan to go to Texas A&M, then who's going to go to Oregon? You think about the, the way the carousel moves. Um, and even in Indiana, I, know, I, I say that, and you're like, oh, you know, Indiana, who cares? Uh, Minnesota, if they open up, who cares? But you're at a point right now where that that's a program that matches up pretty well with the Big 12, especially for whoever the coach is. That's a program you think, all right, yeah, you know, they're probably better than Houston, right around where Houston is. So with AM opening up, now your first option is taken off the board for any of these teams that want to do head coach. That's not a good thing. I made a list last night. Texas AM, Florida, Miami, Mississippi State, Cal, Indiana. Good chance all those are open. Michigan State as well. So now with Texas A&M having a vacancy, does Jimbo Fisher coach the Big 12? I don't think so, but that's not where I look first. That, that's the easy topic of conversation is, oh, pipe dream, he could go to West Virginia. However, the issue this creates with other Big 12 programs is now you might lose your first option. If it was Jeff Trailer, if it was G.J. Kenny at Texas State, who I think is going to be gone from Texas State this offseason, should be gone, should be at a bigger team. Then what? Now what? How do you stay relevant in the coaching search when your options are off the table? That's, that's why I don't like that a and opened up. That's why I don't like that Jimbo Fisher got fired now because myself, as a Baylor guy, I'm hoping the Bears can get a big-name candidate and... Their number one guy might be in College Station. 
Remains to be seen. You can make the case, too, that whoever A&M gets is going to be too big of a candidate to ever coach in the Big 12. Would have been too big of a candidate to go to Houston, a West Virginia, a Baylor, and maybe that's the case. Maybe you're also a fan of one of those teams saying, no, we're not, we're not going to fire the coach this season. We're not going to be in a coaching search. And maybe that's the case, too. But if you are, take one big old nasty look at the competition in College Station and say there's no way you can pony up the money, the NIL, the transfer portal prowess of a Texas A&M. That hurts if you're Baylor, Houston, West Virginia, or anybody else in this conference looking to make a move. How about Michigan? Speaking of making moves, they might leave the Big Ten. Huh. What does that do for us? This Lockdown Big 12, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. LinkedIn Talent Solutions is the place to go when you are looking to make a new hire. I hire an intern every semester. Every semester. And they don't just have to be from Baylor. They don't have to just be from the Waco area. They can work remotely. It's all easy to hire because of LinkedIn Talent Solutions. The purple hashtag hiring frame. I open my job up. I add it to my, pro- my profile. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. Small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Keep in mind that terms and conditions do apply. 